number 878 in the series by and by. Number 878. 878. Let us sing. There's a land that is fairer than day. Amen. 
church, say amen. Amen again. God is good. God is good. All the time. Yes, he is. God is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Amen again. I was I was sitting there looking. I was like, oh, he's going to sing that one before I get up. So you want me to try happy to use this chair. Amen. 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 It's certainly good to be standing before you. Um, Sister Renee has suggested. I don't like this chair. <laughs> you know, I'm just people over the steering wheel. <laughs> Sister Renee has suggested that uh, I be introduced since it's been so long since y'all have seen me. Uh, so I have Ted Spence up. Uh, it's certainly good to be here this morning. It's certainly good to be in this chair. Blackfoot standing and sitting to preach the word of God. Amen. It has been seven weeks, nearly two months, since I have been in the pulpit. And uh, certainly I'm thankful for Brother Mervyn, for Brother Chet, for Brother Bass, who have shared the word. Uh, just, just standing flat foot, say, I'm going to just preach what the word says. And we're certainly appreciative of them. Um, I feel like y'all can't see me because. I'm barely seeing over here. Uh, uh, it's clear. I know. It's just, it's just me. It's, it's, there's an edge here. There's an edge. Here. You understand? So it's. Uh, but uh, but uh, certainly, I thank you for your prayers. Uh, this has uh, been a journey to find out, or to go from the hospital to finding out you have MS to, to being seated, um, to walking with a cane, to not walking with a cane. Amen. Um, that's only the Lord's doing. And so certainly be thankful for, for God's grace and his mercy. Um, uh, let us remember to keep in prayer, uh, Brother Churchill. Uh, he was lost of his father. Um, there are a few other prayer requests. Uh, this morning I made a phone call. Down I made a phone call to uh, 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 Nate's godfather. Y'all know him, Brother Ty Johnson. And um, he just, he just, we called because today stay his birthday, his daughter's birthday. We just called to sing happy birthday. And he was just like, right, he just dropped the bombshell at the bombshell. Um, one brother, a very, uh, one brother, that was just super healthy. I mean, the healthiest man I've ever met. And he was well into his 70s. I mean, but you couldn't tell that. Mainly because, you know, black don't crack. But he, uh, and um, he, he let me know, it was just like, yeah, he, uh, he passed away a few weeks ago. Um, so I actually keep the McElveen family in prayer. I also ask you to keep Ty in prayer. Um, his grandmother, we just saw her at the Huntington Church of Christ. Um, his grandmother passed away last week, and the funeral was last week. Um, and keep him in prayer. He was at home. He said, well, I'm on my, after this, I'm going to the hospital. His son, TJ, um, TJ's mother, Ty's uh, ex-wife, uh, is in the hospital and it looks like um, she could go at any moment. Um, there has been a lot of death that has happened in recent weeks, in recent months. It's some tough times. Um, there's, there's a joke, but it don't feel like a joke, that January was a long year. Um, it just, because a lot happened in January. Um, just, and I'm not sure if, it, if it's just, I know all of us, we've been through something in the past few months. January has been a tough month, and even the beginning of this month is a little tough, but, but God is able. God certainly is able. So, if you don't mind opening your, your copy of God's words, Matthew chapter 5, and verse number 13, read so eloquently by our dear brother, Bill P-I-L-L-C. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I learned that as I wrote his name like that in my name. I'm like, I'm sorry, you mean will you be like not? Nah. But uh <laughs> but uh, just certainly thankful for him. And he, he volunteered. So I said, as long as you volunteer, one of these days you're gonna catch a whole chapter from me. <laughs> and uh, uh it was one verse this morning. I said, So brother Ronnie from Rescription and Bill's walked in. I'm like, all right, um, but y'all know I get around a hard time. 
Tell them to read 67 verses in the Old Testament. <laughs> But uh, Matthew chapter 5 verse 13, I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible. The Bible says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. And all God's children say Amen. Now, if you were to read that in context, verses 14 through 16 would also come about, but, but I want to center on this verse for a reason. A lot has happened in these past seven weeks. Um, for me, it's been a lot of thinking and reading, a lot of meditating on the Word, a lot of listening to God's voice, a lot of looking at what's going on in the world and what's going on in the church. If I can tell y'all the truth, what I have discovered is that the differences between the world and the church are slim. When I say that, I'm talking about action. Amen. Uh, in recent months, I were in, last year, I was talking about faithlessness that has taken place and swept over the church. Uh, we got people who don't know Jesus at all, who seem to have more faith than some members of the church. Amen. Uh, today I want to begin a series of sermons geared towards spiritual health. With all of this in mind, I've been thinking about our theme for 2020, which has been the restart. Um, and there was a song that recently, in dealing with spiritual health, is, is a song that came to mind. Sometimes some hymns will come to mind and, and, and just, you know, like, like a shelter in the time of storm or, or glory, hallelujah, salvation and glory. Just a number of songs. And there was one song that came to mind and it kept going through my mind. And it's not a hymn. It's, it's not a spiritual, but it's a hip hop song written by the late great Craig Mack. So with that in mind, if you lend me your heart and ears to this thought. The brand new flavor in your head. Amen. 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 Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Here comes the brand new flavor in your head. Anyway. Uh, we in church. We in church. We in church. Time for new flavor in your head. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. But uh, uh, stay tuned. We're going to walk through this thing today. Um, we begin today with, with, with a tremendous focus on spiritual health and wellness. And I, I think it's only right that we uh, do this for the next, what's that, six months, if y'all don't mind. Um, let me say why. Um, uh, first, let me uh, readjust, if y'all don't mind. I just, I just, I just, hold on one second. Ah. So if I stand too long and preach, I'm going to be busy in a little bit. Therefore, I, I will sit. Amen? Amen. 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 So, oh, look at God. That feels so much better. Amen. 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 Y'all might not see much of me. Don't make give you a dirty look. Y'all pray for her. Pray for me. Amen. Amen. And amen again. Well, but uh, we begin. I like space. I like space. Don't judge me now. Don't judge me. Y'all can't judge me. See, I got MS anyway. Um, but uh, <laughs> let me uh, <laughs> let me say why I think that for the next six months we ought to look at spiritual health and wellness. It is really because of there have been a lot of how shall I say it? Um, flashy hype sermons that have been preached around the world. Amen. And, and a lot of times what, what has happened is, um, it, it'll get you hype, it'll get you inspired, but is it teaching you anything? I, I'm not just talking about in society amongst various denominations, I'm also talking about the Church of Christ as well, amen. Amen, because sometimes we can open our mouth and say something and, and, and it sounds good and it, it seems good, but you walk out like, man, that won't preach. What was the sermon on? I don't know. Y'all follow what I'm saying? So, so I, I say that because the job of the evangelist is to equip, 
arm and inform. Amen. Um, and I say equip, arm, and inform because the mandate given in Ephesians 4, verses uh, 13, 11 through 13, he gave some apostles and some prophets and some uh, uh, evangelists and some pastors and teachers, and it's for the equipping of the church. Amen. So we all go into the unity. Amen. But it is to equip us. There are people in our society who are fighting hellish battles with life with people and they're not armed or protected with Jesus. There are people in the church who are fighting hellish battles with life and they have forgotten or misplaced Jesus in their life. Amen. That's what it is. During this time period, we're going to address both. Thus, I, I just want to share this. If, if you know someone who needs to hear the word, to get closer to the Lord, whether it's obeying the gospel or growing their faith in Christ, I ask you, please invite them out. Amen? Amen. We, ju we just want to share what the word says and equip some folk with what God's word says. Amen? Amen. Let me also state, to be in Christ means that the gospel has been obeyed. Amen. Amen. Right there, Romans 6, 1 through 11. I ain't got time. Uh, Acts 2, 38. They, they, uh, Galatians 3, 27, 28. If they've not, if you've not obeyed the gospel, let me put it plainly, you need the gospel. It ain't good enough just to go to church. Amen. Okay, I'll say it again. It ain't good enough just to go to church. Because sometimes we go and sometimes, yeah, I say it like this. Sometimes ain't nothing being said. Amen. 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 It just, it just, sometimes ain't nothing been said. I'm just saying there's a church in some part of the country. I'm not going to say the name of the church, but I, I was watching it and I really was like, yo, man, this is fire. They, they was killing it. Man, was up there, they was doing Michael Jackson's greatest hits. I'm like, yo, this is fire, man. Y'all know Michael's greatest hits and some of them, you know, like Billie Jean and y'all know what I'm talking about? Somebody been from the Jackson Five. Y'all know it just, it just, it just, it just was. Sunshine. I was like, oh, that's fire. And then they said, now let us have opening prayer. I was like, hold up, you playing. This is a church. Y'all y'all follow? Sometimes, dare I say, sometimes, some folk get off on entertainment. And there's nothing wrong with entertainment. But when it comes to God, his word, and his church, we ought to hear a word from God before we focus on entertaining ourselves. Because this ain't my church, this ain't your church, this is God's church. Amen? Amen. Today, we deal with an issue that has been pervasive in the church as well, and it's also been pervasive in our society. In other words, we act like the world in a particular way. So, our focus today, if you take taking notes, is to have the right mindset so that we are salt. Amen. I remember back in the day, you used to say to somebody, oh, somebody, oh they salt? You know what that meant, but I ain't talking about that. We gotta be salty, amen. So it's to have the right mindset so that we are salty. Here in the scripture that's given, Jesus, after drawing out the qualities and what we would call the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. All of the Beatitudes, um, after drawing out those things which are the qualities of a disciple, he begins to explain what disciples do. Simply put, in using the metaphor of salt, he states that disciples disciple by influence. In other words, places need to have better influence or better flavor because you're part of the environment. Amen? It should be your workplace is better because you're there. It should be. It should be. Dare I say it ought to be that that with Shaw not present at her job is is going to be it, it ain't going to be the same no more. Amen? Because some places don't realize how blessed they are until the child of God is gone. And then sometimes folks are like, we need to hire them back. And we're like, so sorry, God, I got something better for me. I ain't saying nothing. I'm just saying. It is then 
that Jesus brings up another part for consideration in the latter part of verse number 13. In Matthew chapter 5, the Bible says, But if the salt becomes tasteless, and I agree that Bill read and said, But if the salt lose its saltiness, Become tasteless or lose saltiness is actually one phrase in the Koine Greek that's written behind, that's originally written in, in that word. And what that word means is insipid, dull, flat, or foolish. In other words, relating to the disciple, it means a dull mentality that is useless or foolish. The truth is that there are a gamut of places that we could explore within the context of this statement of this verse, but there is one way that I could think that could sum up a number of them. Um, has anyone here ever had the thought, after going through some stuff, everything should be good by now, or everything should be perfect by now? Or, or have you ever had the thought, you know, we should be able to chill right about now? Or, or even the thought, can we ever get a break? I've been there. I, anybody else been there? Um, this sounds like a hopeless dream. Follow where I'm going. And in many places, among many people, it is. So the question is, because what Jesus says is, 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 is matter of fact. The scripture says, but if the salt becomes, salt, loses its salt, salt in this, or becomes tasteless, and, and really, salt, if it loses its savor, if it loses its influential ability, because you put salt on to make things taste good, amen? I, I really can't mess with sodium, but one of my favorite things to have with chicken is hot sauce. Hot sauce is good because it got salt. Amen. So, but if salt is not effective, if it's no good, you can't do anything but throw it out. Here is where the difference now is with the disciple of Christ. The disciple can change his or her state. Amen. Let, 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 let's be real. Let's, let's be real. Uh, it's not easy to always be encouraged in Christ. Amen. Amen. It's not, it's not. Everybody is not hopeful all the time. Every Christian is not hopeful. Amen. 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 <laughs> Everybody is not hopeful all the time. Sometimes when people tell you to sit out and you don't want to sit out, but, 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 but sometimes, sometimes, Every Christian, and let's be real, every preacher will tell you this. If they honest, it's not always easy to be hopeful all the time. Amen? So the question is, how do we repair this particular mindset? This is a question I've wrestled with understanding the solution for a little while. Um, they are trying to grasp and understand a few things um, to really hold on and figure out that question. It's, it's, it's looking at the human condition in the realm of how we live our lives. It's also looking at the complaints that many of us have, amen? The fears that many of us have all over. And also, let's be real, the prayer requests of many of us, amen? Amen, ain't nothing wrong with it, but it's also listening to the emotions behind some of the complaints within our speech when discussing trouble sometimes. And just identifying them and saying, what could possibly be the trouble? Perhaps, the problem is that we misunderstood the promise of God. That being the case, let's go back to the scripture to fully understand. So if y'all don't mind opening your Bible, turn it to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, and we'll begin at verse number 13. And the reason we go back to the beginning is whenever you want to figure out what a problem is, you want to go back to the source of when it began. Amen? So in Genesis chapter 3, in 
In Genesis chapter 3, beginning at verse 13, the Bible says, Then the Lord said to the woman, What is this you have done? Kind of, uh, okay, okay, so, so, so we understand for the most part the, the context of this. But Adam and Eve are in the garden. The man and the woman are in the garden. God and said, Look here, don't touch that, don't eat it. Well, he said, Don't eat it. Okay. So at the beginning of chapter 3, Eve is being spoken to by a servant with her husband right next to her. I could go somewhere with that. I might go somewhere with that. Hold on. Eve is standing and the serpent is talking to her and says, um, did God say not to eat of it? God said not to eat of it or touch it. This particular fruit on this particular tree of knowledge of good and evil. And he said, God said not to mess with it. Or will surely die. So the serpent says, well, you won't surely die. But you're going to know good and evil. You will be like God knowing good and evil. So Eve sees that it's good. And so she takes up. Now, again, I know I might have said this like a hundred times, but, but Eve didn't have to go find her husband. The Bible says that Eve ate of it and then gave it to her husband with her. And he ate of it. Oh, no, oh, no. There are some people who, who, who might dislike me for this. Because sometimes we say, man, if Eve never ate of it, if the man stood up, that was next to him. They said, what you doing talking to a serpent? <laughs> <laughs> or slap the fruit out of hand? No! <laughs> but sometimes, but I, I, look, I ain't got time. I ain't got time. But follow with me. So they were hiding in the garden. God comes walking in the cool of the day. And beginning at verse 13, we hear punishment. God says, because what he asked before this was, have you eaten of the tree that I told you not to? Then the Lord said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. The Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you more than all, more than all cattle, and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you will go, and dust you will eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity or division between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. So the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. In pain you will bring forth children, yet your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. Then to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat from it, cursed is the ground because of you. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil or in work, you will eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall grow for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you will eat bread, till you return to the ground, because that from it you were taken. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Understanding the context, God is handing down punishment. And he starts with the serpent. Now, starts with the serpent, gets to the woman, and then he gets to the man. And sometimes it's lost, and it could be because we didn't read verse number 12, or verse 11 and 12, where, 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 where God says, did y'all eat the food I told y'all not to? And Adam turns around and blames God. But it doesn't sound like he blames God. He said, the woman you gave me. Mm. So that's when God hits him. Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah, that ain't gonna fly with me, but look at it. This is when, this is when the punishment started. Let's be clear. This punishment is based on disobedience. Let me highlight something. This punishment noted in this text is based on this disobedience. Why do I highlight that? Because in time past, I've heard, well, if you disobey God, trouble is bound to happen. And now while that is true, that theology does not apply to this passage of Scripture. Why, 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 why can I say that? It's because the punishment is eternal. For the serpent crawling on his belly, he still crawls on his belly. Amen? There's no chance of him being obedient to God. For the woman, yes, to the woman, pain in childbirth, even to the obedience system. Amen? 
Amen. Amen. Sisters, I thought y'all was going to be loud and say amen, but it's cool. Amen. I know I saw my wife when we was in that room when she was giving birth to Nathan. I was like, yeah, I can do that. Um, <laughs> amen. For the man, the Bible says the ground is cursed because of the man's disobedience. And work is the only way that he eats, even if he's obedient to God. Why is this important to know? Because just like everything else that God created in the beginning, he finished it when he started this punishment. In other words, the punishment was given a time limit. Amen. In the middle of the punishment, if you wouldn't mind looking at verse 15, God gives a promise and he says, and I will put division, enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He, that's the seed he's talking about, shall bruise you on the head and you shall bruise him on the heel. Now I done preached this many times over and over and over and over again. Y'all can hear it one more time though, amen. Yeah. Jesus is the seed that is promised. If you want to trace it, from Adam, you'd read Genesis chapter 5, chapter 10, chapter 11, the end of chapter 11, and then Matthew 1, and you would see from Adam all the way to Jesus. So when God says, in her seed, look, you're going to bruise him on the heel. That means you're going you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna to be on the cross. But he will crush, I know the text says bruise, but the appropriate translation because of the context of the surrounding it is crush the head of the devil. You heard? In Jesus, there is peace and salvation from this sin-cursed world. Amen? And let's be real. Right here in Genesis 3, we're looking at when the curse began. We say sin cursed because sin cursed it. Amen? Because they sinned and it was cursed. Amen? Y'all with me? All right? That means that within the punishment of mankind, God gave us hope. Hope is a powerful thing. Hope is a very powerful thing, but, 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 but follow along with me. Sometimes we can look at the passage and get so hopeful, we miss what the text said. Amen? There is hope in Jesus. Amen? There is hope of salvation in Jesus. There is hope through Jesus. Amen? And the hope that is through Jesus, the hope in Jesus is salvation. The hope through Jesus is eternal life. But because, dare I say, what should fuel us in our lives is hope. In spite of trouble and circumstances. Now there's a reason I mention this. If there is one thing that I would want you to glean from this passage in Genesis, this verse of Genesis. It is this world, this world, this world, this world will never be perfect. Y'all with me? This world will never be perfect. This society will never be perfect. Perfection will never be achieved in this world. Work will always be a part of our lives in this world. Amen. But because of the promise of Genesis 3 and verse 15, it was prophesied in Genesis 3 and 15. It was fulfilled in John 3, 16. God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten Son, who believed in him, should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. He fulfilled it in John 19 and verse number 30, where on the cross, after receiving the vinegar, he said, it is finished. So what we're doing now our task is to work while we wait. Amen? It's to work while we wait. Hmm. But our minds, come with me now, our minds have to be refocused. Y'all don't know. Now y'all know I don't like page trying to live this, but turn with me. It's 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. In 
1 Corinthians 15. The Bible says, Paul sharing with the Corinthian church, he says, Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there's no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is also in vain. Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God, because we testify against God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, he, not even Christ, has been raised, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless, and you are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep or have died in Christ have perished. If we have hoped in Christ, here's the qualifier, in this life only, we are of all men most to be pitied. If our hope in Christ is only in this world, Lord, I've obeyed the gospel. Lord, I, 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 I've submitted to you. Lord, I, a follower of your will and your way, but you want perfection in this world then your hope is in the wrong place. <laughs> so the question now, when those questioning pop times pop up, and they will, the real question to interrupt yourself and then ask is, is my hope in this world? Now, can I say it you? Hope in this world is a hopeless situation. To hope for perfection on earth or eternal rest on earth is a way to drive yourself crazy. Amen. We can have, now follow, with, with Christ, we can have earthly moments of peace. We certainly can. We can have earthly moments of rest. We certainly can. But, but those are temporary. They're not eternal. Sometimes, and, and, and can I, can I, can I, can I, yeah, let me say it. Sometimes we can cause our own trouble. And then beg God to clean it up. Yeah, I, I had to say this to, to some folk. Um, and, and the statement was quite simply. Uh, it, it doesn't make sense how. We're living in an age right now where a lot of people are saying, you know, everybody can't go with me. And, and I'm trying to get to the next level. Everybody can't go with me. And you know, that is true. Everybody won't go with you to the next level. But you want to know something? People aren't the problem. Our decisions are. Sometimes we've made poor decisions, got poor responses and poor results, and then say, God, can you remove this person and God put it in your hands to do it? O.J. Shabazz says, look, the, the best way to, to, to determine is uh, the law of divine economy. God ain't fit to do what you can do for yourself. Amen. So, so, so look, I always talk about this. One brother came to me first time I come to the, the, the church uh, here, and, and as I, it might have been the same week that I became a minister here, and I remember the brother came to me and said, Brother, I can fast, I need prayer. I said, well, well, let's pray right now. He was astonished. Okay, let's pray right now. And he says, Pray for me. I'm going somewhere. Pray for me that I won't do drugs when I get there. So he didn't like my prayer. Lord, I pray that you will direct him somewhere else and that he not even go to where the drugs are. Why? Because sometimes we make decisions in our power and then wonder why we got the result that we got when all along we just might have to make better decisions. Now that's not every situation. And God certainly has gotten many of us who made bad decisions out of some bad situations. Amen. I can tell you some stories, but I'm not sure that, 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 that uh, uh, I'm not sure I won't get arrested so I won't say it. But look here. We got to make better decisions, but the first decision now is to choose the right hope. There is a point in the creation narrative that we might sometimes forget or miss. And what it is is that God worked six days and rested on the seventh. We all know that one, right? Look here, I, I, I'm not going to preach it right now, I'm going to preach it later, but, but if anything, you need, you, need, you need rest. Amen? You need rest. Look, everybody is not meant to work 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Amen? Two jobs really is for two people. Amen? 
Uh, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I ain't talking about nobody. But I'm just saying. Amen. Because I had two jobs. I learned this from you. I'm just saying. I said that too. Anyway, but, 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 um, amen. 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 Back to the sermon. Amen. But God worked six days and he rested on the seventh. Why is that important? Look, as I said, I can preach it now, but I need you to understand something. If you would take note of this scripture, I'll read it aloud. Hebrews 4, verses 9 through 11. The creation narrative was a trope, a motif. No, it wasn't a motif. It was a trope. It was a shadow of things to come. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 9 through 11 states, So there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For the one who has entered his rest has himself also rested from his works as God did from his. Therefore, let us be diligent to enter that rest so that no one will fall through following the examples of disobedience. The rest that this passage is talking about is eternal rest. In other words, we work in right now, but there will come a day when God will come back. And when he comes back, we'll say to his people, it's time. And then those who've been faithful will enter into eternal rest. Amen. Amen. So the scripture, what, 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 why, why is it a rest? Why is it a rest? Because look, there are some people who are just waiting for Jesus to come back. Hmm. And when I say waiting, I mean waiting and doing nothing. Waiting and just sitting there. Amen. Waiting and waiting and waiting. I'm waiting for Jesus to come back. The Bible says we're going to work while we're on this earth. Amen. We're going to work while we're on this earth. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew 7, verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Let me give it to you from Matthew 25. Verse 21 and 23 say the exact same thing. It is part of a parable, but God says that Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like this. And he, his master said to him, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Well done means work been doing. Amen. How many people ain't never done nothing on their job and still collecting a paycheck? Everybody got to do something. You at least got to clock in. Amen. Because sometimes, and it used to be, I had a job like that. I clocked in. They said they were going to call me. They ain't never called me. Thank God for his grace and mercy. I'm just saying. Amen. Amen. If you want to get paid, you got to do some work. Well, now it brings us back to the scripture. It is work to share the gospel. It's not a hobby. You are the salt of the earth. Amen. Being the salt of the earth means you got some flavor in you. Amen. amen. Some folk that like chicken with chicken, chicken wings and chicken. Amen. Fried chicken. Lord, I miss it. But some people like fried chicken. Amen. You ought to be their hot sauce. Amen. amen. Some people like fried fish. Be their hot sauce. Amen. amen. Some people like collard greens. Be their salt. Amen. Amen. I'm not speaking. speaking but, uh, did I catch everybody? I'm, I'm sorry, Renee. Some people like broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> Be they Himalayan salt. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, ain't, nothing, ain't nothing changed. I'm still the same. Yeah. But look here. It's work to share the gospel. It's not a hobby. But you can't work if you don't have hope and trust in the right thing. In the right promise. And the promise that Jesus said is that he's coming back for his children that have not just obeyed the gospel, but those who got into work and told somebody else about Jesus. Amen. So for those of us that are still here, we ought to have hope. Amen. Amen. Tough as it is, look, nothing in this society will be perfect. Amen. God is a comforter, though. Amen. God said, give me all your burdens. Take my yoke. My yoke is like my burden is easy. Why? Because working with Christ is the, you can have peace in the middle of trouble. And as crazy as that sounds, it's just going to look crazy to everybody else. 
But I just want to, is there anybody willing to be crazy about Jesus like I am? Amen. Willing to be crazy enough to trust him for peace in the midst of foolishness. Amen. Willing to trust him in spite of the fact that it might have been 18 years that you was faithful, working hard, and now you ain't got it. And God just said, now you want to lean on me because I got some for you. Yes. Amen. It might be that the situation seems impossible, intolerable, but God is simply saying, rest on me. Wait on me. I got you. There's a rest coming, but I need you to get to work. Amen. Amen. Someone here needs to reaffirm that your hope is in the right place. And the truth is, no, it's not an overnight thing. It's really not. It's daily work to make sure that your hope is centered in the right place. And that is the flavor that you need to keep in your air so that you can be the flavor God needs you to be in this world. Amen? Amen. Lord, God has given all of us a purpose. We all got something to do. Amen? He's given us all tremendous and amazing gifts. It should be everywhere we go is better because we are there. We are a faithful child of God. Amen? Amen? But it takes getting closer to Him, getting close to Him. It's not an overnight thing. It is a daily thing to work on and to be who God wants you to be. Do you realize how influential you are in your circle? It hit me this week that if our hope is centered on the right thing, on the right things, we will find more, we will find that we will attract more people to Christ. Here's a random truth. Tracks don't do this work. I'm going to say it again. Random truth. Tracks don't draw people to God. Amen. I don't know, Lord, tracks don't draw for the, oh, here's a track, because if it's all about information, it's several Bibles on this tablet. I could just give it to somebody. It's Bibles in many of these pews, pews, pews. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Bible in many of these pews. We could just give it to somebody and be like, you good. But if we don't be the change that they need to see in the world, or if we're not willing to be changed by Christ, y'all ain't here. If we're not willing to be, look at tracks ain't nothing but a tool to prospect people, amen? amen? Our lives and what our hope is seated on will draw people to him. The song says it, it came from John 12 and verse 32, where the Bible says, and the song sings, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. That's the song now. Lift him up. Lift him up. Y'all ain't heard me. Lift him up. That means lift him up in your life. That means lift him up in your life at work. Lift him up at school. Amen. Amen. Lift him up with your children. Lift him up with your enemies. Yeah. If it's anybody that needs Jesus, it's your enemies. <laughs> Lift Jesus up. The question I ask is, are you lifting him up in your life? Rather, does your life say that you are lifting him up? If your hope is not centered on Christ and the promise of the rest to come, then, then perhaps your life doesn't scream Jesus. Amen. Ugly as that is, it's true. If we lift Jesus up. People will come. You know, there's a statement in network marketing that says, if you just, if you on fire, people will just come just to see you burn. Just because folk like to see. Amen. The next statement in Matthew 14, Matthew 13, verse 14, he says, look, you are the light of the world. Light, light draws flies. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Can I give you an example? So, on January 3rd, I had a neurology appointment. And in this neurology appointment, it was confirmed that I had MS, multiple sclerosis. Now mind you, I have been asked, I have been asked unendingly how I'm doing. Oh, how are you doing, brother? How's everything, brother? It ain't, it ain't, it ain't a bad thing for asking. It's not a bad thing at all. But one of the things that, that I've come to realize with some people is 
Some people's hope. Some people's hope. Some people's desire to see God work something out in a particular way shifted when they found out I had MS. I wasn't bothered, and the reason I wasn't bothered was because Sister Andre has MS. And I wasn't bothered because Sister Cynthia has MS. And my mother has been an MS nurse for private patients for 30 plus years. MS never scared me, but I realized it scared some other folk. And I had to talk to some folk and say, you know, my faith is in Jesus Christ. I'm not worried about what this disease might do, but I need you to understand God created me for a purpose. And if he created me for a purpose, a disease can't stop me from that purpose. So no matter what it is, look, get your fear out of here. It ain't coming, it ain't staying here, y'all follow me. Because my mind is like, no, I'm, my mind is made up. I got to serve God. I got to do some things to make sure I can be in the best physical position to serve God and to preach the word. But if I'm going to preach the word, I ain't worried about what some doctor said sitting up in a hospital. You got to understand, my hope is built, we sung the song, on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. It's not, it's not, it's not moving anywhere. My faith is in God. I'm not worried about what the diagnosis is. When the first diagnosis was, oh, it's the, what is it, the hypothyroidism. And then they was like, well, it's MS. I'm like, well, that's cool, fine. And thank you, Jesus. We know what's wrong, and we can treat it, and we can do what we need to. Now I got to get back to work. If I got to sit down, and truth be told, I might have to sit in that stool and come up here and preach at least the first 45 minutes. <laughs> And listen to my wife. Y'all follow what I'm saying? <laughs> what if I got to do? Look, if I got to sit in that chair for the rest of my life, it's cool. I still got to do what God called me to. Yes. Nothing's going to change that. So, doom and gloom don't live here. Doom and gloom can't live here. Because if I allow doom and gloom at least to sit in my mind long term, then I have the question, is my hope really in Jesus? Because if Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I never forsake you. If God said it over and over and over again through the word, listen, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Why wouldn't I trust him? Why wouldn't I trust him? When I can look and see, sisters, y'all don't understand when we would visit Sister Cynthia. When we would visit Sister Cynthia and she was on bed rest and we walk in And we start singing, and I can hear, years of practice, I can hear everybody's voice. And I sit there and I'm like, and I always just turn and look, because Sister Cynthia be singing live. Y'all heard what I said, Sister Cynthia, on better than sing live. Sing live and you can hear her, why? Because her hope has not been diminished. So if her hope is not diminished, then maybe I need to take some of that saltiness, rub it on myself, y'all follow Take the same influence and say, if God can do it for you, he can do it for me. Amen? Y'all, y'all, look, hope is not an easy thing to handle. It's very easy to lose. But we got to refresh our mind and say, my hope is not in this world, not in this society. My hope is higher than this society. My hope is in a better place than this society. So I can be comforted because if I let this hurt me so much that I stop doing what God called me to do, and I'm not talking about just me, I'm talking about each and every one of us. If my hope is stunted because of just some very painful situations, my hope might not have been firm to be in. So I say all of that to say this. It's time to reaffirm our hope. It's time to reaffirm who we've been hopeful in. God is able. Amen. In the midst of troubling times, God is able. In the midst of times of, of weakness, God is able. In the midst of times where we're weak, God is able to strengthen us. Look, if you're here and you're not, you've not obeyed the gospel, I share with you.
that right now we have opportunity. Lord, it has been so long since I have shared this here invitation. The last time I shared it, we didn't have a pool that's right behind me. We had a river that was dirty. <laughs> so I share with you. The pool is ready. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the pool is ready. Why not put Christ on in baptism? Acts 2, 38, unless you repent and be baptized. Oh, stuff, but it says, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins by the authority of Jesus Christ. And you will receive the gift of the indwelling spirit, the indwelling Holy Spirit. So that means you ain't never in this world by yourself. Amen. In a moment, we're going to stand, we're going to sing a hymn of invitation. The opportunity is yours. If you need to come to Christ and come and put him on in baptism, the opportunity is right now. Amen. If God, if God can bless a brother who it took him three weeks just to be able, it took him two weeks to be able to just walk five feet without being winded. And now I can stand up and walk freely. Amen. What can God do for you? That's just physical, but Lord, God can do much more for you spiritually. Amen. Amen. Let us stand, let us sing. If you're subject to the invitation, why don't you come? And we'll baptize you today. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. There is power in the blood. Oh, would you for evil of victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power. There is power.
just stewards, Father. We pray with each passing day, Lord, but especially today, that we'll be your very most faithful servant uh, and uh, steward, rather, uh, of all that you give us. Father, may we bring a smile to you, uh, to your face as we give. And uh, Father, help us to be cheerful, help us to be faithful. And thank you, Jesus, for giving your all to us and to this lost world. In Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. We'll sing and shout the good to 